Admiral's Log, November 17th, 1911. The new cruisers are proving effective. The combination of bigger guns and torpedo launchers proves to be deadly to the British heavy cruisers. While we now have a cruiser capable of fighting the British cruisers toe-to-toe, -to -toe, we still don't have a ship that can project a lot of power. In order to do that, we'll need more operational range. For a long time, I didn't consider operational range to be very important to the current generation of ships. We're only fighting our old enemy, the British, after all. And yet, naval experts have convinced me that if we increase our naval operational range, we'll be able to make much more of an impact on the world stage. Therefore, I'm commissioning a series of Flight 3 York-class cruisers which are capable of operating at great range to bolster our presence across the globe. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to episode 8 of the German Campaign. It was pointed out to me that operational range is a very important factor when it comes to projecting power. As you can see, my power projection is currently only 34,000 versus the British 67,000. Now, if you go to help and you go all the way down, you can see blockades. Each ship has a power projection rating according to its type, displacement and operational range. There it is. So I need to make sure that my ships can go beyond their usual, um, well, very low range of these uh, heavy cruisers. These are the Flight 2 York classes. We're now going to be building a Flight 3 because these boys are simply not really set out to go very far. If I have a look at the ship, the way that I designed this is an operational range of a little under 10,000 kilometers, which is insufficient. I'm going to need more. So this is going to be the York Flight 3. The York 3s. We're going to pump these guys with oil. And we're going to increase operational range. I'm going to set them to basically as much as I can. And that'll probably have to come out of their speed. Otherwise, I don't really know how to make this thing work. So we're going to do 23 knots. They're not particularly quick. But they still got those 10 inch guns, they still have enough firepower, they still have a ton of armor on them, and they should be more than sufficient to project a bunch more power. It will take them quite a while to build, so unfortunately it's not like I'm going to be crafting these things and throwing them out tomorrow. Uh, sadly not, we'll just have to be pretty patient until they come out. But when they do, I expect this operational range to be vastly more useful. Um, Let's see, this yeah, fuel stowage is going to take a lot more space. This makes them 400k more expensive, but so be it. I still have a little bit of displacement left. So let's up armor the superstructure and make sure that we are as untouchable as possible. Let's see, these are already maxed out. Wow, you can really put a lot of armor on these 10-inch guns. How high does that go? Third, no, we're still not there yet. What the hell? 17.4 inches of turret armor. Ah, uh, that's a bit much. Considering that I can pen 22 inches and I have that armor quality buff, I think that about 11 inches is more than sufficient. And in order to accommodate that additional displacement, what? I'm going to have to take that out of the superstructure again, I guess. Yeah, we're pretty much back to our... <laughs> we're pretty much back to our original displacement. Oh well. Save the design. Um, I ordered the scrapping of the newly built ships. So, the let's say the Flight 2, the York 2s. I'm going to let those continue. But I'm going to order up a Flight 3 uh, group. And these... Let's see... Give me another six of these build. I'm slightly negative, but it shouldn't be too hard. All right, we have a convoy. The Victoria Louise, one of the newer cruisers. That's the uh, York 1 operational range or operational unit. And the V4 destroyer are going to take on the Northumberland and nine transports. The Northumberland is reinforcing. That's the R. So I have a little bit of time to take down as many transports as possible. Let's cripple the British economy a little bit more. Now, the enemies to the northwest. Let's head over there and take them out. Later on in this episode, I'm also going to be designing a new destroyer because my current destroyer gen is... It's okay, but I want to do better. 
I want to make them more useful. I want to give them more operational range to potentially help with power projection. And I would also like them to be capable of um, well, doing a bit more gunboating. Because the way that I have them set up now is not really that beneficial. Victoria Louise is already eagerly throwing out torpedoes. It looks like we have already been detected by the British battlecruiser and are coming under attack. Let's get rid of these transports. I don't expect the British battle crews to be very effective at this range. Those are famous last words. Because they only need to get lucky once when it comes to dealing with my destroyer. But hopefully we'll be able to get out unscathed. Because I would love to do another one of those destructive, crippling torpedo attacks with the V4. Four transports have nowhere to run. That's another one of the merchantmen. For some reason, the AI has an extreme, extreme hate of destroyers. They always prioritize my destroyers over anything else. I don't know why, but apparently they figure out that the destroyer that is currently barely contributing to the destruction of their convoy is far, far, far more dangerous than the heavy cruiser, which indeed is doing a lot of the fighting. This one should be just about dead. Where is your battle cruiser at? Come about. You see the origin point of their firing? No. There. Somewhere about 12 clicks out, I think. Let's just let them simmer for a little. Let's continue to do some damage here. Not too much later, I have eyes on the British Battlecruiser. It is actually quite a bit closer than I was hoping for. The ship is operating at about, what was it, six clicks? Yeah, six and a half clicks away from the heavy cruiser, the Victoria Louise. I might be able to pen the battle cruiser at this range, but I don't expect so. So instead, we're going to focus our attempts on krilling as many transports as possible, while basically using the rest of the transports for cover. And then letting the battle cruiser come in for the kill. At least that's what I want them to think. Because I need that ship to come closer. I need the Victoria Louise and the V4 to work together to take down that behemoth. Because taking down the battle cruiser would be a big prize. Now, of course, this is a bit of uh, cruelty to small ships. And for some reason, the transports this time around appear not to be armed. It seems very, very random whether the transports are packing firepower or not. And I still haven't quite worked out when they have and when they don't have guns. London is down. Extensive fire got it. Do we have the British Battlecruiser ID'd? Not yet. 50-50. Okay. V4 has 18 torpedoes and they are labeled for the Battlecruiser. is tempting to just forego the attack on the transports. But they're so easy to kill. Target the Westcott. Sorry, the Westcott. Seven and a half clicks out. Relative to the heavy cruiser, 6.2. Hard starboard. We're going to chase that thing down. I suspect that the battle cruiser is going to zigzag and then turn back that way. And that... Oh, whoa! Could you fucking not? That took me a lot of flooding. That is not good. That is extremely not good. Northumberland, with her seasoned crew, gains a 26.5% accuracy bonus. Making her extremely dangerous. 
and very, very capable of very quickly getting rid of a destroyer such as the V4. Now, if I launch against Northumberland at four clicks out with torpedoes, I think I will not be successful. The Northumberland, with her 11-inch guns, can and most likely will pen the Victoria Louise. I don't like that one bit. Range, four kilometers out. I am desperately going to need more uh, destroyers. I've got a whole bunch of half-dead transports sitting around. Kill that off. Speed 24-8. Okay. That is if they are operating at top speed. I know that I get an accuracy bonus if I slow down, but right now I'm just interested in getting closer to the target. That is the Northumberland. Come on, V4. Throw your torps out. Because I think it might be the last thing you get to do. If at all. Okay. Well, that was it for the V4, probably. Torpedoes are away. Uh, now I want you to engage the Edinburgh. I want the Victoria Louise to... Um, well, I don't really want to spook the battlecruiser too much. Uh, never mind. The transport... This boy here has detected my torpedoes. Because of that, the battle cruiser's already turning tail. They have many bulkheads, cramped quarters. I can pen them pretty nicely. But those 10-inch guns of theirs... Sorry, 11-inch guns of theirs are far more deadly to me. No, we're going to continue to raid the transports. I just need a few more. I should have killed the transports first. Therefore, not allowing the battle cruiser any kind of warning about the torpedoes. I hope that the Victoria Louise's armor is going to hold up for a bit. Come on. Get rid of the Melbro. This thing just disappeared. Smoke up. Starboard turn. Three knots. Ouch. These destroyer classes of mine are awful. Aside from that one attack I did against the battlecruiser many episodes ago, they have really not been very effective. I designed them as capital ship killers, but the capital ships are proving to be very deadly to the uh, destroyers. Before they even get a chance to attack. 44%. Come on faster. Because these are not particularly happy to see me. And I really don't need the Victoria Louise to end up in the shipyard again. Come on, Melbro. If you could sink, we can move on to the next. There are a few left. Additional fires have been set. Buoyancy is going down. 5%, 4%, 3%. Well, they're doing their level best to keep that ship afloat. Not enough. Next. We're at 56%. There are still a few that I haven't addressed, shall we say. I wonder if this battle cruiser is staying at range to make sure that it doesn't get a torpedo thrown at it. I suppose that is a, a fair strategy on their part. Because they don't really benefit from getting any closer. They can pen the Victoria Louise just as easily here. And they don't need to be this close. Because they have their transports, believe it or not, to spot for them. The transports apparently are radioing in against the battlecruiser. Yeah, your shots are a little short. Your shots are a little long. You need to adjust your aim as such. Or something to that effect. On must cut. We're at 56. Is that accurate? I think they're somewhere 
down there another one. But I need to find it. That's the Westcott. Yeah, she's basically dead. Victoria Louise has been hit a few times, but not damaged. That's good. Come on. Down you go. I can end the battle. I know that there was another ship out here somewhere. They have lost line of sight. Hmm. Sixty-seven percent only? Really? Did I miss that many of the transports? Well, shit. Let's just end the battle and keep the ship safe. It is a defeat because I lost a destroyer and while they lost a few transports, they didn't actually take any kind of damage to their military vessel. And because of that, the game considers that a defeat, at least for me. Okay, we need new destroyers. The current destroyer design is pretty terrible. Let's go with a new one. We need the destroyer one. We're going to go with, um, yeah, 1100 tons is the max displacement. I'd say 30 knots is fine. We're going to make sure they have maximum operational range. I'm going to give them turbines. Uh, armor is not really a thing on these ships, simply because they don't, well, they don't have anywhere to put it, <laughs> in essence. Um, auxiliary engine, force boilers... Reinforce bulkheads. Yeah, all sorts of buoyancy and floatability for these ships is useful. Let's see. If I want to make this more of a gunboat build, any kind of base accuracy is much appreciated. Main guns. I suppose a couple of 4-inch guns would be nice. Uh, secondary tower. Again, base accuracy is useful. I'm going to push our funnel between there. How much smoke interference are we looking at? How bad is it? 22.5. Which is not actually costing me anything. It's not costing me base accuracy. That's good. Induced boilers is enough. Interesting. Is my funnel already too big? Wow. Okay. Even natural boilers are sufficient. That's actually pretty damn good. Okay. These are 15 tons. These are 17 tons. After weight offset, 72%. But I still need to add a torpedo launcher. Torpedo launcher's arc is pretty terrible, sadly. But, well, I hope that I can still kind of make this work. These are going to be fast torpedoes, 19 inches. Coincidence range finding. Radio is not that important. This is, and so is this. Um, what if I put that there? No, it's going to make it worse, not better. Five nine, four three. That's better. One six. There. So we got a ship which has four four-inch guns, all with pretty good fields of fire, and they have one single triple launcher. So in case they come up against something that they cannot kill with their guns, i.e., everything else. Um, everything else but a transport or a destroyer, they're going to be using their torpedo launcher. And these are fast torps, so they get a 4.1 kilometer range, but 42 knots, which is very nice. Now, powder upgrades. Um, gun range, I find not that important. White powder. This is nice. Flat out shell damage and HE damage. This is far better. Oh, you're suffering 20% shell pen here. How much can I pen? 
Two and a half kilometer range, let's say, give or take. Seven and a half inches of armor. Okay. 7.9 inches. You can potentially cripple the likes of a light cruiser with this. That's pretty nice. Now then, let's put some armor on these, believe it or not. It's probably going to be just enough to arm the fuses. So that's not necessarily going to do me any favors. Aft belt. Yeah, 1.5 is the max that you can put on any kind of destroyer. But I get plus 45% armor quality. So it's actually going to work out to some, some not terrible armor. Oh, actually, uh, speaking of, I need to upgrade the armor quality. And then I get a plus 90. So we're looking at about 2.7 inches of armor. Something in that range. Could I put two side by side? Yeah. Is that useful? I wonder. I don't think so. Yes, if you're going for a gunboat that charges in like that, sure. But that's not really the plan. One percent aft weight offset. After a bit of tweaking, this is the design. We got our bow gun, four, oh, sorry, three on the stern. I really don't enjoy this this gap in my bow that much to house the torpedo launcher because if you put a gun there, it's not very accurate. Or it's not very useful. If you put a torpedo launcher there, it's iffy. But okay, this is it. Uh, it's for a destroyer, pretty heavily armored. It has heavy shells. It has advanced hydraulic turrets. T turrets? It has advanced hydraulic turrets to allow these things to turn faster. Enhanced reloading to load them faster. They're firing dunite shells. And they have the white powder propellant. They have uh, natural boilers for 100% engine efficiency. It's because they're only doing 30 knots. They're not particularly quick, but they should be more than fast enough to intercept transports. This is the V11. Um, let's say the V11 gunboat design, so that I know what is what. I'm going to order up a few of these things. 1.6 million per month. My monthly budget wasn't that stellar to begin with. Um, I'm going to pull all these ships back into in being. That's going to save me a little bit. I'm still not very sure where my battleships are at. I mean, I know where they are. But some of them are just not fighting at all. And I don't know why. I would love to see an engagement with a battleship. Something useful, but no. Now what I'm going to do is scrap one of the battle cruisers. Because they're not very good. And they do cost me 1.3 million per month. So we're going to scrap that. That's going to come at some cost to my power projection, but not that bad. And it will stabilize the budget to some extent. I have lost one unit there. Hey, a battleship! Finally. It's once again the Victoria Louise and the Kaiser Wilhelm de Grosse against a couple of light cruisers and a destroyer. Let's fight these guys. I really think this is the first time I've seen the battleships actually do something useful. Maybe I just had to ask them again. Uh, I want you to follow in... No, not retreat. Follow the heavy crew... No, the, the battleship. And let's see if we can punch a couple of holes in one of their light cruisers. Now this is going to piss a lot of people off. I saw this in episode 1 comment section. When I designed these ships, I was shuffling around the 5 inch guns. So the port side 5 inch gun is slightly further back than the starboard one. And um, well, that pissed people off. <laughs> I'm sorry the ship isn't perfectly balanced. But we'll just have to make do with the ship as is, considering that they're already built. Hello there. Cadet level crew, because, well, reasons. We don't really have the budget to train our crews. 
You just have to hope that the tech advantage of Stereoscopic Rangefinder 2 is going to be sufficient to kill these guys off. Finally, something bigger than a heavy cruiser is fighting. It took forever for these things to finally encounter something. Their second... What? Sorry. I was about to say, their secondary guns consist of 8-inch casemates and as well as 5-inch turrets. And these are capable of penning, well, supposedly all sorts of light ships. If we can hit them, that is. Um, my frustration at the moment, however, is that these light cruisers and their little, uh, what is that, 5-inch guns? 7-inch guns were able to damage one of my guns. How did that happen? I have 12.5 inches of armor on those 12 inch turrets. So the only thing that I can imagine is that I got a partial pen on that gun because it was plunging fire. It was fire that came down from above and that caused some damage. Now four kilometers is, as far as I'm concerned, close enough because these gentlemen have torpedoes. And they have used them. Light cruiser Venus. Bingo. Hard port turn. Actually. Hold that thought. Got the torps there. You know that they carry four per. The DD only carries two per. If something is going to get torped, it's going to be the Victoria Louise, because I want her to scout. Slow the ship down. Slow you down. Hard to starboard. I don't want to eat any torpedoes, thank you very much. Damage to the DD. Good man. Looks fire against the destroyer. The destroyer, which seemingly executed a torpedo attack against my heavy cruiser. Yep, there it is. And we have managed to land some hits with a 12-inch gun, no less. Overpen, coming to absolutely nobody's surprise. Crippling the Porsche. And hopefully enough so that we can catch up to it and eliminate it. Uh, I want you to switch fire to one of these other light cruisers. These other light cruisers, which some of them have just decided to execute more of a torpedo attack against the Victoria Louise. Like that. No, don't overcorrect into the torps. God damn it. This again? See, that was a beautiful dodge between those two. But it's the second time that I've overcorrected one of these York Flight cruisers into torpedoes. Oh, we should be fine. Because these light cruisers don't have any torpedoes left. So they're mostly harmless. Take out the Porsche. And now we're going to cripple these light cruisers. Multiple steam expansion engine. Okay. Interesting. I thought they'd be running barbettes. Uh, barbettes. I thought they'd be running turbines on these ships. Apparently not. Crip one armor as well. So they get an armor quality boost. It's just not that good. And their armor is slightly heavier. That's actually really interesting. Now, before I was recording the episode, just to try and see what would happen, I set the research to 5%. Just to see what that would do. Well, it wasn't pretty. If I want to set my research to 5%, I can. It's going to cost me about 2 million just to do that. And um, the issue was, I got a research time of 900 months. Which is ridiculous. So I immediately put the research back down. And we are definitely not going to be researching anything for the moment. Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse. Punch some holes in the Venus, will you? 
45% chance to hit. Now we're getting somewhere. Bingo. The Porsche is down. Excellent. And you can come back. Let's have the 8-inch guns do what they do best. Now this could be a pretty nice blow to the light cruiser group. The British. Do they still have plenty of them? And they have been building ships like there's no tomorrow. I think that these guys really can't do much against my battleship. No. Oh, they can pen the superstructure. And they are. Good work. More flooding. Damage to another main gun. This is starting to become a pattern. And not one I'm particularly fond of. Destroyed secondary gun. Look at you go. Venus has done 832 damage. The Forte has done 103. And the Scout 46. But I suppose that a lot of that damage with that torpedo. Yeah. 813 damage out of 832 was the torpedo attack. New target, the scout. Swing your guns back to starboard. Flooding. Good man. Finally, some bigger ship action. Where have these battleships been all this time? Boom. The Venus is still crippled. The Forte, however, is not. So we're going to attack that with the Victoria Louise and make sure that she's not capable of running away anymore. I'm going to go with high explosive here because I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm going to ricochet off of that. Not sure if I can properly pen that. 12 inch guns. Boom. Oh, beautiful. The Victoria Louise torpedoed the Forte, leading to one, two, three, four, five, six flooding compartments. I'm going to get some retribution in for the torpedo attack that was executed against the Victoria Louise. So that's one down. Next comes the Venus. Yep, a high explosive is going to do you in, buddy. More flooding. Although I think that was one of the compartments that's already done. You should be dead. And now the last one. Some crudely small ships here, but then again, they are the enemy. They have to go. Missed. Try again. We got more guns. How much have these 8 inches contributed? Not that much. Interesting. And here I was thinking that the 8 inch guns would be fairly useful in an encounter with a light cruiser. But then again, I don't have that many of them. They have hit their targets quite nicely. Come on, a good hit to the bows. There you go. Beautiful work by the Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse. Excellent performance. This is what I want to see. Battleships taking down light cruisers. Victory points, 20, sorry, 2022. There's 17. That's more like it. That's 5.2 million per light cruiser. 436,000 per month in maintenance costs. That's expensive. Of course, mine is far more expensive at 1.8 million a month. And after, after about two years, I'm finally getting some use out of them. All right, well, that's going to conclude this episode. Um, I'm hoping that these new ship classes are going to make more of a dent in the British fleet. Of course, it's going to take me a while before they actually make it out onto the battlefield. So join me for the next one, because at some point we shall see these new things do some warfare. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon for the next one.